Hey guys, this is Jeff and Lauren from the Netflix series Tiger King. Make sure to follow and subscribe to the Real Life Street Stars. Real Life. Real life street stars. Hold on, we got a legendary situation here. We got the. I mean, it's really like the. the, the, the I want to say the cast of the main important in, in, integral parts of the Tiger King man. Uh, during the COVID uh, situation, um, people were wondering what to watch on TV, what to do, uh, what to see, and the Tiger King came on and took the world by storm. And here we have uh, fam people that you may know. We have. Uh, Jeff and Lauren Lowe, and we also had James as well, yeah. uh, to be able to come in and sit down and talk with us about the phenomenon of the Tiger King. First and foremost, how are you guys doing uh, with this newfound success of, uh, and I don't want, let's just say newfound fame of the Tiger King fame. How, how has it, you know, how have each of you taken it personally? It's definitely changed our lives for sure. Our lives changed completely overnight. None of us knew that this was going to happen just it happened to be covid and tiger king happened at once and it was stars like it, it stars aligned and everything exploded <laughs> there, you go, there you go there you go jeff um you were already kind of the man before this well thank you yeah you were already kind of the man before this but i try to tell everybody that they just don't listen <laughs> but there's one thing to have to be known around the world where a kid in thailand might be like yeah i know you i know you how does that feel to where like you're known around the world? It's weird when it's little kids because you think, what did your parents think when they put you in front of the tiger, you know? Um, but it's, it's, it's kind of surreal. You, you forget sometimes. Like when, we, when it first hit and the zoo started getting besieged by people, I mean, we'd have a 500 cars at the zoo. It, you know, the, a big crowd was 50 cars before, and then you'd have 500 cars. And you, you forget that when you walk up to the office this morning, there's going to be 300 people standing there acting like you're somebody, you know? Yeah, yeah. The day before, they didn't give a damn. Yeah. And um, so that was kind of weird getting used to. And you'd wake up yeah. in the morning depressed, and you'd think, wait, I'm going to go up there and feel like I'm famous, you know, for the next 10 hours. So it's, it's cool. It's pardon me. Can you still walk in Walmart? Like, yeah, we do. Um, I prefer Target. And, <laughs> I prefer Target. Do you get notice in Target at all? Oh. oh, that's where it actually first. Yeah, that's hit. when we first knew we were in trouble. We we were we actually were walking into Target. This was in Norman, Oklahoma, and we just dropped a tiger off at the vet for its, like a little checkup, and Sarah, our daughter, she was only six months old at the time. And we hear people in the parking lot screaming, teenagers, and we're like, but we didn't, we were yeah, like, we we're just there teenagers, fights. we thought there was a fight going on, so we're like, whatever. We're, we walk into Target, of course, this is right before they were like, you have to wear a mask. And we're in the diaper section, getting Sarah some uh, clothes and diapers. We turn around, and there's 50 people hiding behind clothes racks and taking pictures of us. And we're like, what's going on? And we yeah, we're so looking behind us, seeing if there's something strange going on and not you and <laughs> and all of a sudden they're like can we take your photo and we're like sure they're like tiger king was it real did it really happen and it was just so surreal but it made us very humble to a lot of people and grateful but we, we say hi and hello to everybody we're not mean to anyone and it's just it's the fame been a great is cool. i mean the fame is cool and everybody should get to experience it but it can get I mean, it can get kind of creepy, you know? Um, and you can't go to a restaurant anymore without people sitting taking pictures of you eating, which is... Yeah, that part know. is hard. So if you look like a you know a gorilla when you eat, you just, <laughs> you just gotta yeah. turn your head. And, but it's, I mean, and we went out last night into Fort Worth, and when I saw the crowd, we pulled, James pulled around the corner, and Bottle Blonde and all these, and I thought, I said, man, this is going to be really bad. <laughs> he goes, what do you mean? I said, it's going to be really bad. Yeah. And we got in there, and it was really bad. It was really, I but mean, it, it was, in a good way. Everybody was so nice and friendly. It was a very welcoming. And it's committing. easy to become an alcoholic because everybody wants to take a shot. Everybody wants to give you a shot. Everybody wants to buy a shot with you. Yes. 
I was yeah. like, take a picture. Here's that's what a shot. got us. In, that's what got us in trouble in Oklahoma City. We, I mean, fifty-seven shots in one night. Oh. Yeah. Fifty-seven. Yeah. Oh, fifty-seven yeah. shots. It was I so bad. I remember nights. I don't remember nights. I I don't Sorry. remember any of that. You're not the, you're not the guy to turn a drink down. Uh, you know what? Sometimes he'll like pretend drink, but he'll like you know, <laughs> kind of hand it off to the side because you start knowing your limit as to when to stop. But you're still going to be nice and be like, well, thank you. We'll get a photo <clears> and then. <laughs> Move on. And I'm the fool that says, yeah, I'll take a rumple mitts. You know, three of those will put you on your butt. And oh, my yeah, so the night, 30 of them, you're just <laughs> comatose. But, you know, it's cool. I, it, 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 Wait, it's how died it, down. How was it for you, though? Because you were in Florida. Man, I was, uh, I live in a touristy area in Florida. I have a jet ski business. So my, what Tiger King did for me, it helped boost my jet ski business because obviously, all the jet ski memes during COVID, you know, I did more jet ski tours than pretty much any company in the Florida Keys. So it was good. It was just strange getting off the jet ski and have lines of people wanting to take pictures with me and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was strange, but then you have the dark side of this to think too. Yeah, James, because, you know, you, your claim to fame was more so like you kind of thwarted the whole plot. And, you know, you kind of came in what was... It's supposed to be a plan or whatever. Well, see, I, I feel bad because I put him in the situation that he got, he was put in. Really? Yeah. Hustle, hustle. Right? Yeah, it kind of. I mean, we, it was my fault. We, it was kind of a mutual deal. We were like, pretty much, you know, Joe needs to go. He's doing awful things to animals. I, I, we didn't, we didn't care that he wanted to kill Carol Baskin. Yeah. He's just, <laughs> People talk about doing stuff like that all the time. Oh, Gosh. my God. We weren't the only ones that wanted her gone. It was like I mean, anybody in the animal industry was like, the bitch has got to go. Now it's everybody, everybody in every industry. Listen, I think she's the most hated woman on, on her. I, yeah. I was Carol Baskin's first target in 2006. That was her first husband. Oh, wow. That <laughs> bitch fucked with me, uh, you yeah. know, for years. Remember my Carol Baskin's, her location was in Florida. Tampa. Tampa. Yeah, I used to Tampa, live not Florida. too far from her. Oh, and so she yeah. would constantly be calling PETA, the authorities on me. Mm -hmm. and, and she did know, exactly yeah. the same thing Joe did. Yeah. I mean, she kept tigers in yeah. cages. Her cages were even smaller. Yeah. And she's in an area where the ground is soft and, you know, hurricanes blow through there. Hurricanes are just so bad. So every time hurricane go through, we just say, I hope half her cats get out. Just, you know, because she she deserves some of the negative um, um, animal rights, nuts, you know, criticisms that we all get, that she's caused us all to get. She deserves herself. And, you know, I hate to say I'm glad it happened, but it was like the day before Christmas or something, I think. Two years ago, um, you, you know, you, Joe had a, an employee lose an arm. Carol, Bas Carol Baskin had an employee, employee lose an arm. arm. Two years yeah, ago. A 70 year old woman. Yeah, and, she lost her you know, arm. Carol, yeah. of course, throws the blame on this woman. She didn't, you know, proper protocol, but the way Carol's cages were built, you couldn't avoid, you couldn't help but avoid um, to get that close to the cat and it grabbed her arm. And but and, they buried the story yeah, so fast. We don't hear like, about her anymore. How did that happen? We don't so. know if she's alive. We don't know if she's dead. Wow. Carol obviously paid her off to, yeah. to just be quiet and never give an interview. If she's alive, she's never given an interview. So um, just, and this is for all three of y'all, um, before we even start this interview, mm -hmm. as far as getting into it, what is y'all thoughts on animals in general? Like what are your, what are your, what do you love or hate or disdain or uh, admiration for animals in, in general? You know, we, we love animal, every animal. We. I'm an we, animal advocate. We, you know, we, yeah. we live in Mexico now and we, we go buy, we'll go to Sam's, they have Sam's Cubs there. Thank and God. And <laughs> we buy, you know, 50 bag, big bags of dog food and we take it to the shelters. I mean, we still care tremendously about animals. Mm -hmm. I, I do see more now that I'm, that I'm kind of stepped away from it a little bit. I, I see people's point about cats being in cages, but I also understand that you know, everything in this room has affected the ecosystem and, and the environment that all these animals live in. And as long as humans continue to want to, you know, have nice clothes and toilet paper and all these things, mm -hmm. we're, we're chasing animals into highways. You know, a perfect example, in Mexico, there's jaguars everywhere. And they're building this Mayan train that's a high-speed train that goes, you know, all the way down the Yucatan Peninsula. And it's chasing the construction and the explosions to to do this are chasing jaguars into the road and they're getting hit. 
and one just got hit and she was pregnant yeah. and so, she was two days away from get, giving birth and it was just like so sad because it was like there's nothing I, they could do. I think in order for, for my kids and, and her kids to be able to see these animals, I mean Tasmanian tiger, it's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. You know, 1927 is the last one that anybody's seen and if someone had 50 or 100 or 200 of them in zoos that were breeding, they'd want to see we'd them. We'd still have them. Yeah. yeah. And the tiger is one of the most majestic animals ever. And one of the you know, most badass animals ever. Why do you ever want to lose a tiger? And you know, I, I, I hope they survive and I hope people will leave them alone, but you know, there's 96 elephants killed every day, you know? And every day we lose 100 elephants. And you know, I, I'm, start singing it. I want you to dare you. Yeah, please don't sing I'm not that gonna song. sing that Joe Exotic song. <laughs> I'm not gonna do um, it. But um, if, you, if, you, I mean, if you can afford to take care of animals and you wanna own a monkey or you wanna own a tiger, you should be welcome to own whatever you want as long mm -hmm. as you do it responsible. As long as you and, have the money to take care for them and love them and yeah. give them the up utmost respect. Yeah. That's all that it should be. But you have these people that are going to hate on you and be like, they yeah. belong in the wild. And it's yeah. like, they've never seen the wild. Yeah. Never. It's not like we took them out of the wild. They were already born. So yeah. it's kind of like, oh. And why is it okay for Carol Baskin to have a tiger, right. but James can't own a tiger? And it's ridiculous, mm -hmm. and all these peat organizations. It's just, it's, you know, if you do it responsible and you care for the animals properly. Yeah. There's certain people that shouldn't own <laughs> yeah, exactly. animals. Yeah. That's a difference because. Is but there's... you know, the funny thing is, you can go back and look through the history in the last 50 years. Most of the animal attacks um, and deaths are in. The big city zoos like the Dallas City Zoo and and Jacksonville Zoo and those are supposed to be the respected AZA zoos who know everything you know the the, the gods of zoos and <laughs> they've got two tigers you know mm -hmm. two Sumatran tigers and we had 250 of them never had anybody killed um, yeah. so you know it's it's just a very very hypocritical industry and it's almost like the equestrian you know the, the horse industries the the money why doesn't peter go after the horse tracks True. it's because all these you know million multi-millionaires in dallas own racehorses and they can fight back they have the money to fight you know the the bad press that peter would give them you know we did we didn't have that luxury i mean we had enough money to keep 250 tigers fed and, and taken care of but and you don't have yeah everybody. you don't have the money to pay half a million dollars to an attorney um every year and which we were doing is just yeah it, just, it they, eats you alive <laughs> they just sue you into non-existence and i mean but here's the thing right because like you said it's obvious that they all have a love and care for these animals why does it that just people gets to come in and say y'all aren't doing our job or, yeah exactly I, it's it's this and, and what people don't know is that PETA kills more animals than joe exotic and carol baskin and and all of these other um, irresponsible animal owners has, has ever killed. PETA kills them every year. Yeah. And, and it's not about the animals with PETA and Carol Baskin. It's about money. Right. It's about how many, how, much, how many donations they can take in in a year. It's all about money. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not about, like Carol Baskin is probably one of the biggest online bullies there is because she has a lot of money and she just harasses people. And she takes in four or five million dollars a year and free mailbox money so she can harass people. And that's what she does. And like if Joe would have followed through with his plan, I wouldn't have lost any sleep. No. Carol Bassin mm -hmm. got whacked. I wouldn't you know? So I had to ask, you know, there was a report that Carol Bassin's husband was found alive and well in Costa Rica. What are y'all That's she, not true. She put that out. That, she, she put, put that out. out. Oh, yeah, that's not true. Yeah, I'm feeling like, you know, everyone was going crazy. Like, oh, this changes everything. This if that that's the case, then she, then she needs to return the life insurance money. All right, she collected the house and the, everything. everything. All the guns that she gave to Kenny Farr, the guy who yeah, probably. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. She actually got paid because he was missing. Right. And they used it as, hey, well, he must be, you know. And you know what? On the very first day she was eligible to have him declared legally dead, she's standing at the courthouse waiting, for, waiting for him to unlock the door. Yeah. Do you feel yeah. like that kind of played into a lot of people's feelings on Carol Baskin as far as that? Well, you know what, she was... Day, 
Carol never thought she'd be famous. I mean, Carol just thought she'd be this old, ugly ex-prostitute living in Tampa. Oh, and, yeah, she is a never, former prostitute. And never be noticed. She is. That's yeah, how she, she met was, Dawn. Yeah, she, Nebraska yeah. Avenue. Yep, yeah, she, she lived on Nebraska yeah. Avenue. Lived, she worked in Nebraska Avenue in Tampa. Yeah. And Don picked her up. And yeah. That's and how they, that's we're, we're going to expose so what, we're going to expose Carol Baskin this year. Yeah. So what are your thoughts when we see her dancing with the stars? Oh my God! The judges destroyed her. I they, want her to fall and break a hip, but she, she never had I mean, hoping for the moment that like they break her neck or something. they they destroyed her. So I mean, like we don't have anything that we need to say about you, it. The judges did it themselves. You so. know, when they picked her, that they it was were just gonna, to be made fun of. It was just to be the laughing yeah, stuff. Yeah. But on a on, on a on a sensitive side with what? that dancing with the stars, no. She's a real you got to think they're bitch. making fun of this guy dying. Yes. You know, they made fun of, you know, when the judge would say, oh, she killed it. They were insinuating and right. you have a family over here that's mm -hmm. grieving the loss of their father and she's involved <laughs> and it's just, it just shows in this world, money can buy the whole legal system. How do you know Kim Kardashian? Oh, uh, you know, a tape, Ray J. a tape of, you know. Before that, uh, oh, okay. 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 Yeah. I mean, so two people losing their lives is how Kim Kardashian is as famous as she is. And Carol killing her husband is why Carol is as famous as she is. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of a sad, sad reflection on who we are as a society that, that we can put these people, we can just look beyond what they've done and stick them up on these platforms and, and make them tremendously wealthy and so from what the netflix show showed with don lewis um you know he was already traveling you know to columbia Texas. you don't feel like it's just a plane in the seat no because no, his planes his, his plane planes were there. there um that's why right. yeah he's and you know carol's a licensed pilot too and that didn't come out yeah, yeah. see yeah. See, we're just dropping bombshells yeah. 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 and they carol do. keeps changing her stories and why did she disconnect his phone if he's still missing why she did dis disconnect his phone? Why was she giving away all his guns? Because yeah. she knew he wasn't they coming back because she knew somebody whacked him. Yeah. One hundred percent. This is this is more information. Uh, I can tell you why she's free, but I'll probably have a hit because it's kind of a mob related. And let, let me I'll lay this out there. Oh, yeah, this is gonna go pretty deep. So if I get killed the next few days, oh god. Then you know why. Okay. Oh. So the sheriff of Hill the sheriff of Hillsborough County. In right. Tampa. Who's Tampa? His, his father-in-law is Eddie DeBartolo that owned the 49ers. Okay? They, his family donates to Big Cat Rescue. There's a gentleman that sits on Big Cat Rescue's board of directors that's also in business with the sheriff. So there's all kinds of connections and corruption. But as long as that sheriff's in office, Carol will not be prosecuted. So he protects her, and, and yeah. her brother was her brother, her brother was, was in the, in the, uh, uh, sheriff's deputy. With, yeah, when Don went missing, when Don so, went missing, you know. and I mean the FBI has already determined yeah. that that all of the wills and the power of attorneys all of were all forged. forged. Yeah. They were traced. They were traced from their from their marriage certificate. Or? Yeah, everything was every document land transfer was traced from their marriage license. But it wasn't just that. It was. In his uh, will, it says, "In case of my um, death or disappearance, mm -hmm. who puts that? Yeah. yeah, who puts yeah. in case of my disappearance into so, something and say, hey, yeah. here, here's the money.' So I'm just curious. Yeah. If a person was to feed someone to tigers, let's just say. Oh yeah. Okay. The, do you a whole body or do you parts? You'd find a lot of the human. I mean, you'd, you you it, it might eat some of the soft cartilage, but you'd find the skulls and, yeah. the, and because, the femurs." But, yeah. you know, the story is she had these industrial meat grinders. You know, if you watch Tiger King, she says, oh, there's no way I could have ground him up in the meat. And she had one of these little bologna grinders hooked to her mm -hmm. kitchen cabinet. She had industrial meat grinders yeah. that she had to pull behind golf carts. I mean, these things, big motors on them. And these, these sleuths has fi have found the receipts where she sold them at um, an industrial auction. Um, auction. But she claimed them as stolen. So yeah, she actually filed a police stone. report as them being stolen. Because you could so. grind, you know, in an industrial meat grinder, you could grind bone, you'd never find yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I'd never find Jeez. anything. She's guilty. It's just money. Jeez. I mean, money. Yeah, you know, again, uh, R. Kelly was guilty the first time around. Look what happened. Do, do you find it sick that, I mean, pretty much Netflix kind of helped her prepare?
Elvis. Well, let me. <coughs> you mean? That's the story. I mean. Okay, so what Netflix did? The director, well, not Netflix. It wasn't Netflix. It was Royal Good director. Productions. Okay, it's a rich guy named Eric Good. He owns basically like a big cat rescue for turtles out in California. All right, he's the Carol Baskin of the turtle world. Oh, wow. They he wanted to get this big cat safety act passed, which they used Tiger King to make us shed us all in a bad light to get mm -hmm. this law passed for Carol Baskin. That passed this year. To, so you can't privately own a tiger anymore. You have to be a business or whatever. So, so they used the Tiger King director, Eric Good, hid a lot of this stuff. He hid a lot of allegations. They had a lot more stuff on Carol that they could approve. She was tied to this missing person, but they didn't want to expose her that bad. They just wanted to get her popular, pass the bill, move on to another project, with their, which they're doing now. They're going after the monkey industry. Wow. Okay. Yeah, the okay. Tiger or Netflix is about to release. It's called Chimp Queen, right? It's called Chimp Queen. It's Chimp Queen. Queen, yeah. Nobody knows that but you guys now, oh, and really? it's or ex except Who's except Who's except now everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> now everybody, now now everybody, everybody now. else. But so, you know what? I'd rather steal their thunder, and um, expose it before it's too late. It. So now that we're on chips, let's start with. Uh, I want to talk to y'all about Joey's album. But before we get to how y'all even met and kind of the relationship. There was a situation on the last episode of Tiger King season two where they talked about Joe. Um, I think no, I think it was the first episode of season two where he buried a chimp. Oh yeah. Yes. He did the say something song, uh, singing to the chimp. Uh, had the whole funeral. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that in itself? When you see like Joe, knowing Joe for who Joe is, him going all out for this chimp. I'll give you the answer uh, to that. Yeah, that Why is it recorded? Good. <laughs> Why is it recorded? When you when you go to grandma's funeral, do you record it? Yeah, we don't have a high production on grandma's you know, funeral. You know, you just, everything he did was was a mechanism for attention. And, you now, know, the, film this. You know, a handicapped child, he'd see a handicapped child being brought in in a wheelchair. Uh, Timmy, get up here with the radio. You know, or the, oh, with the cameras. Camera. We gotta get the whole camera. Yeah, get yeah. the cameras, get the cameras yeah. up here. And, and he'd get post pictures and then. He talked shit about them as soon as they yeah, were Yeah, he talked yeah. bad about handicapped people or with disabilities. Uh, he didn't like women. Um, well, the one most racist. In general, just women in general. Women yeah. in general. Oh, me and yeah, he him, couldn't stand him did not yeah. get along at all. I, like, it just, was just yeah. bad. Just ask yourself, this lady's arm got ripped off and he had time to go put on a paramedic's jacket. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Yeah, when you start looking at. <laughs> we yeah, found him. Right there tells you a lot. We found an interview the other day. James and I finally have acquired what Joe never wanted anybody to acquire, and that's his private personal hard drive of all the sick. Oh, the stuff that was missing. Yeah. That supposedly well, actually burned up in a fire. Up. That's the other footage. That's oh, the that's footage. That's, footage. that's still, yeah. we have that this too. is part of that We have too. that too. But we've spent the last few years um, spending all of our children's inheritance to buy footage. <laughs> Oh, wow. um, and that's why when we called Netflix and told them what we had, they said, uh, we need to talk. Was any footage surprising? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. yeah. Stuff we can't show. I mean, stuff we probably shouldn't even own. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, we, it's, we all, had, it's, all being, it's all being turned over had, to the proper authorities. We had to tell the oh, wow. FBI what we were buying. And they uh, have to get involved. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. yes yeah. they absolutely do. It's that sad. And I mean, but. Is there anything you want to, like, just. Oh, I want to say, say anything. You want to, I mean, uh, I, you, I, I'll, I want the pleasure to do this one. You do it. Okay. I'm checking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Shut Joe, up, you bitch. So, <laughs> so Joe wasn't able to use his manhood. Okay. So Joe got off by seeing it, things done to his husbands and boyfriends. Wow. Well, there's a particular in, uh, time where one of his husbands had sex with a farm animal. So it's, it's there. Cameras are out. Yeah, so he wasn't. He didn't hide that he like, like these yeah. were his trophies. Like, Who do you, you know? think he had filming? What, 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 what type of animal? Joe. On um, Farmers of the Dale. You think he did it Bah. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Yeah. It's real. It's real. It's Goes. real. We acquired a lot of his footage. And this guy recorded everything yeah. from about 2011, every day of his life, 
I mean, we've oh, been... Oh, no, 2005. We found some from 2005. Oh, right? yeah. We've been downloading this one drive we have yes. for That's about bad. two days almost now. It's six terabytes of... Six Just terabytes is like, is like 3,200 hours of video, right? Yeah. 3,200. Yeah. Well, oh, no, 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 it's just that. It's not just that. It's not just that. No, no, no. But there are, there's like other things, yeah. We found a video yesterday that, um, where he was, he filmed himself selling endangered wolves, you know. And selling lions. Oh, you're not taking yeah. it out here until I give him a check. I was told my check would be here, and, you know. Cameras on? He filmed yeah. everything. He filmed, he filmed everything. Yeah. But then, everything. like, but what he had, he had a microphone on, and then the camera guy would be standing kind of far behind, so. So it's off, yeah. yeah so, and you could hear him get on the phone saying, you told me the check was going to be with the guy. Yeah, you know. it was just like, good Lord, he's just confessing to all his crimes and filming it, and it's just like. The feds really picked and choose, I, I think, the ones, because they, they got him for selling, what, five tiger cubs? This guy sold 5,000 tigers. I think he admitted at one point that he's moved 4,000 tigers, yeah, I but I wonder so. if he means sold them. Man, y'all need like an animal kingdom academics. Like, yeah. like whenever we do something in our community, academics expose this. Like, what, who exposes stuff like this? Yeah. They're like the zookeepers for idiots, right? Yeah. Well, well, we, well, Joe spends every day bashing me and Jeff and Lauren. Mm -hmm. He has these people on his social media that are logged into his social media that are totally Never met the guy. Accusing us of everything every day of the week. Never so met we him So we finally person, got man. tired of it after four years of harassment. Now, this whole celebrity thing was fine for a while, but there's a dark secret. I mean, there's a dark side to it, too. Getting harassed by people, getting death threats, you know, uh, all these internet keyboard warriors writing bad reviews on your business because of a television show. Oh, yeah. There's a whole lot of different stuff that's going on too and then being bashed by joe every day from prison Maybe. and Sarah. uh <laughs> Sarah. it was Sarah. time me and jeff and lauren we started fighting back and now that's where we're at now joan i mean uh, james and i joe sorry <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> now james and i have, have discussed many times that if you watch tiger king you think god these guys are the biggest fucking criminals they're dangerous they shouldn't be on the streets and then you look and just these guys fucking with us every single day. I said, if you really feared us, if we were really, you know, the, the creatures and the monsters that you said we were. Why would you, you want to fuck with us? You wouldn't piss me off, you know, and it's, um, it's just the irony is not lost in the fact that they continue to stick us with a, you know, with a stick every day. And they just pissed us off and now it's time. Okay, we, we, put, we ponied up the money and we bought the hard drive that Joe never wanted to, to be released. <laughs> Season four. Yeah. Season four. <laughs> That's what we're about to do with it. Yeah. James, uh, now you got the snitch jacket. Yeah. Uh, Rat, snitch, informant, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, we don't usually see that get thrown around a lot outside of, you know, hip hop. Hip hop. <laughs> but you got a snitch jacket. Yeah. 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 No, you're not a snitch because you can only tell on a snitch is if you tell on somebody who's doing business with the y'all are. Yeah, I wasn't work. trying to save my ass for anything. <laughs> you know? Right. You so, trying to stop trying to get an evil man off the street. If, yeah. Okay, but you say this if, somebody, if somebody's beating your kid and I told on him, would that make me a snitch too? No. I mean, there's some people have, you know. This guy needed to be off the streets because he was killing all these tigers and he was hurting people after all these young boys. So I didn't do it because of Carol Baskin. I did it for the animals. And Carol Baskin came up in a conversation, and that's when Joe put his foot in his mouth. I mean, he put himself in jail with his mm -hmm. tapes and his yeah. trying to hire everybody to kill that bitch down in Tampa. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, wow. what people yeah. have never heard. Like, so so. For a moment, did you really think he was going to get pardoned? No. Okay. No. I was out there. I was like, oh. no. I, had a, I was sitting there drinking a beer. I had a bet on it that he wasn't going to get pardoned. We were betting because, you know, they had the whole limo thing. And hairdresser. They had a hairdresser. They had a hairdresser. Oh, yeah, they, did, they did have a hairdresser. Nobody wants Joe on the streets. He would be. Helicopters. Yeah. Yeah, no. Wait, but you know what? Helicopters wait. weren't just Joe. Joe rented a helicopter and flew over Big Cat Rescue. Yeah. And Joe rented a helicopter and flew over our park. And um, the feds, when they were when they came to the park to dig up the tigers, 
the feds came over and said, you know, if I knew anybody at a news station, this might be a perfect time to fly a helicopter over. So, the, you know, everybody used, you know, everything that they could use to get their point across and to make, make an effect. And unfortunately, it was just too cloudy and rainy that day. They couldn't get the, the chopper in the air. But otherwise, there'd be footage of them. There, were, there were like 20... I mean, we got a lot of pictures and footage. 20 um, SUVs, you know, dark SUVs pulled into our zoo and drove down there. And it was crazy watching these guys dig for those tigers, but we found them. Yeah. That's crazy. Why, wait, wait, that's, that's speaking of plot to kill. Yeah. Jeff, there was a, 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 a story out there that, that somebody was plotting to kill Joe. You know what? You knew, you knew of the plot. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, Alan Glover. that's not exactly how it works. <laughs> Alan Glover, the guy that got in a bathtub in Tiger King. Um, you know, he's the nicest hitman you'll ever meet. He's the nicest, <laughs> nicest hitman. The nicest yeah. hitman you ever met. Alan is like a troubled child. I mean, Alan, Alan dropped out of school. I think he's got a third grade education. Yes. And I took care of his brother. His brother had brain cancer. He worked for me in, in South Carolina. And when his brother Bubba got um, brain cancer, I... You know, I paid his rent and paid his, I paid everything for Bubba. And Alan, who was his kind of convict brother, who, who Bubba tried to take care of, Alan just saw what I was doing and thought, I've never seen anybody be nice to anybody without an ulterior motive. So he came, he says, I'd like to work for you now and take my brother's job. And I said, you know, let's, let's do it. And Alan is a super nice guy. I mean, he buys the baby diamond earrings when he's got no money. And but Alan is easily manipulated, and Alan, Alan was one of the worst um, uh, drug addicts and, and alcoholics that you've ever seen. So one night he, he got drunk and he got cocky and he pulled a gun on me, and um, a shotgun because I was, I was criticizing. You can't, we were loading tigers at three in the morning. He said, you can't do this, you know, with a gun, and, and you can't do this drunk. So shots were fired and Eric Cowie, you know, the, and there were already police the on one site who died, too. Eric Cowie pulled out his gun and he shot at Alan's feet. And he says, and I said, the next one goes in you. And so Alan now has a grudge against the guy who he thought was God before. Um, so Alan allows John Phillips, John M. Phillips, let's turn this into a commercial for John M. Phillips, the crooked ambulance chasing better call Saul attorney of Jacksonville, Florida. Scumbag. Just a horrible, horrible yeah. man who took Joe's case um, and has just, he, he's As a railroaded Joe's stunt. case. Complete Joe stunt. had an opportunity with, an, with, with a real criminal attorney. This guy's a civil, you know, slip and fall accident attorney. If Joe yeah. would have gotten a real attorney, there was enough Brady violations in, in the government's, um, which was concealing some information. I think there would have been enough to at least garnish him a new um, trial. Yeah. Not to overturn his conviction, but to get him a new trial. And, and maybe shorten his sentence just a little dumbass, bit. And but... this dumbass attorney has gone up. We, we were going to help him because the feds came after us after promising that they were going to leave us alone. They raided our, our new park with 47 you know, armed guards with night yeah. vision and, and ARs and... They stayed the night on our property for four days. They wouldn't even try to let us leave the so house. I said, what it the was fuck? insane. You know, you guys, you guys yeah. aren't gonna come and kiss our ass for a year to help you get the biggest animal wildlife trafficker in the in the world, yeah. and then turn on us. We haven't done anything, but it didn't matter because Carol Baskin said it was so. Yeah. And they. Yeah. Um, and she so, was behind it because we found her actually trying to like break in on our property. Our everything. Fence. Yeah. So we, yeah. we called John Phillips and said, look, I've got some information. We've got all these, we recorded everything. I mean, every, everything. And I said, we've got all these recordings of the feds and um, that might be interesting to you. He <laughs> says, I, I just booked you a plane ticket, get on a plane, get that stuff out of your house before they come in and seize it. Yeah. So we went down there and we shared all these recordings under the um, provision that he would now sue the people who just raided us um and that he become a RICO, our attorney under a rico act because now you had PETA, carol baskin and the doj um conspiring to oh, wow. to steal all of our money so now you got a racketeering case against the department of justice and he says this is a slam dunk so 
that we signed retain or we, we retained him which you know he's joe's lawyer now he's our lawyer and we helped put joe in huge huge conflicts of interest and he said he said you know i got to get joe to sign off on this and he'd call us up he says we're good you know joe says let's go and he even we're going to give joe 50 percent. we're going to give 50 percent. and um you got noisy neighbors and um it um you know it just it played out that now Lauren's got a really successful OnlyFans account, and so even even the the phones and the hard drives we gave him had all kinds of you know yeah. great stuff on it. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker starts uploading to to Pornhub, figuring uh -huh. that he can upload her videos and hurt her earning potential on um, OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> everything, everything, everything this moron's done recently is just to magnify us and keep us in the in you know so. He's now he's taking and, and recycling. I was on TV a few times. Um, I worked with the Knievel family, and I was on different TV shows with the Knievels. And he's recycling these things on a daily basis. And to, so like, it's like, like what a, is it for? What why? is it supposed to do? So he's play, every recording that she had of the feds, he's posted online. Joe's entire case has been posted on YouTube. And what, it's ever, like what, what attorney have you now? ever seen put all of his cards on, on the fucking internet? Mm -hmm. And so now, what's his plan of attack? He, he got us to sign affidavits, okay? He falsified his affidavit. He offered him $10,000 to change his testimony. Wow. To and match Glovers. To match <laughs> Glovers. But yeah, oh, back to Glover. That was your question. I'm sorry. Um, so Glover told him that we had a plan to cut Joe's head off with, with piano wire or barbed uh, wire. It, it, was, it was the wire that would come in the haystacks. Oh. And it so, was just like, yeah. yeah. But Alan would call me in Las Vegas because Lauren and I, once I, Joe got us to come to save the park. We saved the park and I said, I got to get out of here. I can't deal with this guy. So we went out, we went out to Vegas and, and Alan would call me and say, can I kill this motherfucker? He says, I'm going to drop a chainsaw on his head. And he says, I'm going to string a wire and cut you because Joe would go flying through the four wheeling. And so we just heard yeah. it, you know, and, yeah. but now Alan turns that into a, yeah, me and Jeff were going to put. That was a plan. <laughs> And and the producers of Tiger King already, I mean, they wanted that story. That was that was the only big news of Tiger King too. Yeah. And I mean, he he's the one who found out that it was all falsified. I mean, they. Yeah, the director told me it was all garbage. They planted the yeah. wire, and they and you know, I do. Alan did say he wanted to cut Joe's head off, and I. But you do what you, you want to do. I don't but care. But you also told him you're like Alan, like or yeah. you said you we have a business. I said you're in a family park. And you want to decapitate a guy right up in the center of the park? I don't think it's good. I was for like, business. that's not very good. That's yeah. not a good idea. <laughs> so but, you know, you, you can't you can't save people from themselves. Yes. And and Joe come to me. You think Alan could kill that? I said, you know, sure, he's capable. I said, but is Alan a third grade graduate the one you want to put the you know the fate of the rest of your life in his hands? Yeah. Dumbass did it. <laughs> right. And, and you know what? People people never heard. James had James had the FBI informant come to the park. I mean, James was with the FBI informant, and Joe's trying to say, I never paid Alan to do it. Well, if you go look at the juror, one of the jurors from trial, she says, the public doesn't know what we heard. I mean, and Joe told the hitman that he took, mm -hmm. he says, my first hitman ran off with my money, so I need to get another one. You know, so he's just admitted to an FBI agent. He paid the first hitman, yeah. and, but now it's all a setup. Jeff set me up. Word to the word to the wise: If you're gonna hire a hitman, offer him a whole lot more than three thousand bucks. I know. Three thousand. Three thousand. I mean, he wanted to finance the hitman. Three thousand oh, dollars down. Oh, he's the hit. He yeah. wanted to, want to afterpay the hitman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah afterpay. Yeah. He wanted to fucking afterpay the fucking hitman. Three thousand down and seven hundred dollars a week for however many fucking weeks. <laughs> You know, when, it's sad, it's when you it's plot it's a murder, don't you just give the hitman money? You never want to see him again. Right. You don't want to take payments life. from the. You don't want to pay the guy They're payments. Sick, bro. So he wasn't very. Because now they want. Now the government. He wasn't very fucking smart. Now the government's going to want to like check your books and see like, okay, where where did this thousand dollars <laughs> oh, go? Did, where right? did this one go? And, and I do have to put this out there though. This is what people don't understand that watch Tiger King. The only reason Joe's in jail, yes, I helped contribute to that, and I'm and I'm I'm happy and content with what I did. But John Finley, his back, I mean his friend or his ex-husband, was the one that put the money together 
and was able and to turn him in. And that sealed the conviction. So it wasn't even me. So. And, and I, I, I pointed it off to you guys can before I use we. The restroom. No, please, go ahead. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, y'all can keep going. I pointed it out to you guys before we, we before we went live. Is if if we knew if we had proof that Carol killed Don, every one of you guys and everybody who's watched Tiger King would want us to go to the feds and tell them what that information is. What's the difference? We we took a person who we knew was killing animals and and molesting children. Yeah. And in molesting animals, and we turned him in. You know, yeah, if, whoever, if, we, no. if we'd have looked away, yeah. and a child would have been killed, raped to death, or if, if you know, Some people divorce, would say, yeah. people would say, why the fuck didn't you guys say something? You right. saw this going on. You know, but yeah, you could, whoever puts Carol in jail is going to be a hero. Oh yeah, because yeah. one thing during COVID, the only thing everybody in this world agreed on is that bitch killed her husband. That's it. Yes, that's you know, that's the only thing anybody ever agreed on the whole world. Yes. I mean. I haven't heard one person say, oh, she's innocent. No, everybody, the bitch killed her husband. So, and we're going to try to do that with our new Tiger King series. We're going to try to, we're going to try to put that bitch in jail. I mean, you, you can call me a rat the rest of my life. I don't care. As long as Carol's in jail, you know, everybody can live peacefully that has animals. That's an understatement, but yeah. <laughs> How was he not killed by a tiger? Well, he was drug around by his foot, and they tried to kill him, and he really was kind of scared of tigers. Yeah, someone said he was scared of tigers. Actually. He, I mean, he carried a gun in. I mean, you know, I went in with the same tigers he went in, and I never carried a gun. Um, because if you get to the point where you need a, to shoot a tiger, you're pr probably pretty well fucked. Yeah. Right, yeah. And um, he just, he carried that cane, which was fake. His, his leg was fine. It's funny, we filmed, we filmed one day, he filmed his tiger show. He's limping around with his cane, telling people that a tiger knocked him out, you know, took it out of his knee. And then we did, we, we made this float to go down the Christmas parade and we put baby tigers on. So he's up there and the kids are yelling because, and he's got these bags of candy. And he's jumping off of this four foot hay wagon and running to these kids without his crutch. And I said, I got, his knee just got it. Oh, no. <laughs> No, one, the, no, the no, one day the feds noticed that he put the leg brace on the wrong knee. Wrong leg, yeah. Oh, 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 and come on, come on, and he, he was rear-ended in a car accident one time. And, you know, he put on this neck brace and shit and said he broke his back in like four places. He called me up and said he broke his hip. But two days later, he was perfectly fine. Oh, and he cool. only wore the neck brace when people were, in, were around. Attention whore. Yeah, that's what he is, an attention whore like his lawyer. They're media whores. Joe wanted so hard to be famous, but look where it's got him. Yeah, that's not about, yeah. I, I just got to ask about the, um, because one of the things, the standout things in the Tiger King series was the disc video that was the back and forth that he was making, the music video. Like, it, it, oh, yeah. I <laughs> saw time. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's crazy. Is, did y'all get a kick out of any of that? Did what? The, 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 uh, the disc video that he was making going back and forth. Well, you know, he didn't sing. Um, yeah, he, that, that he, was not him. We'd go, he'd take us to lunch and he'd put... Oh, he really the game? Oh, mm. everything. I have the contracts, oh, I have yeah. every, every bit of proof to oh, show. Yeah. He paid a guy named Danny Clanton and Vince Johnson <laughs> to write and sing his songs. And I have all the footage of him making his music videos. And he can't, he, he, his lips wouldn't even match the oh, lyrics. Yes. Oh, he's he never signed. I mean, he sounds like this. You know, he's not... Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't that, sound that like... That fucker can't sing. Yeah, he sounds like a hibbling and he opens his mouth, Lou Rawls comes out, you know, it's, it's, yeah. Like when Travis died, um, his yeah. husband that shot himself, at the funeral, he, it was all about Joe. It was not about Travis whatsoever. He was in front of Travis's family. He said, um, I uh, rescued, him from, I rescued him from underneath the bridge. He was on all these drugs. That's not true whatsoever. Travis and his mother worked at the park. And then all of a sudden, Joe's like all in love with Travis. So now it's him and Travis. So well, now you're gay. Yeah. You weren't when you got here, but you are now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and at his funeral, <clears throat> Joe sang. And he said, I'm sorry, my voice is really rough from all the crying I'm going to do, but I'm going to do my very best right now to sing. And I, a tuxedo. I, looked, I was like, oh I'm my God, lazy. no. He, you know, that Here Kitty Kitty video, Were Joe's. Where? At the funeral? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they hear Kitty Kitty video. 
Mm. Um, with his with his cowboy hat and his black tails, oh, yeah. he wore that to the funeral. And he says, uh, I, "You know, I wrote this special song for for Travis, and it's going to be really difficult because I, I've been crying for days and days in my throat." And he just oh, he showed his, his real voice. Yeah. <laughs> one, one week after Travis died, he was on a date at Two Frogs with a new husband. Got married yeah. weeks later. Yeah. He he mourns. It oh, only takes him a week to mourn. We were so pissed off about that. How do y'all think Joe feels right now to see that he, him for seeking all this fame he wanted for the past 20 so odd years and then to get it, but he is incarcerated to not enjoy it? You know, I, I know he hates it, but I think what he hates more is that we got any level of fame out of it. Oh, yeah. That'll do it. Yeah. That'll do it. That'll so do it. so yeah. we post every picture we can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I know it. Yeah. So what was, what was yeah. the, Taping versus the actual first episode of Netflix. It was oh. um, it was about eight months, I think. Oh, so yeah. That's after eight months, did it drop? But, but the, the whole show took five years. Yeah, the whole show took five years. Why were y'all filming the whole? Why was so much film there? Yeah, because it was so deep. Oh, they they claim that they've got forty five hundred hours of footage. There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of footage. Yeah, there's there's they have enough show. to make a lot of more episodes. Was but, it for a documentary? Was it just for self? Gratification? You know, it was no, no, no. It was it was this Eric Good who, if you look up Eric Good and there's an E on the end of Good, he owns some of the kinkiest and weirdest nightclubs in New York City, and he owns all these Bowery and the Jane hotels. I mean, the guy just sold us a piece of property he paid five million for for sixty million. This guy is like in the hundred million dollar um, um, tax bracket. And yet he had to, he fired all of his employees during COVID. All the restaurant employees just fired him. Yet he took $14 million or more, we're finding out, in PPP money. It's like, you know, yeah. so he's just one of these, Carol, Carol's, uh, Carol took PPP money. John Phillips, the attorney who sues everybody. But he asked, he asked about um, the filming, like how long the filming took. I'll get there. Okay. Took PPP money. You know, everybody, and, and here you got us. And James running businesses where he's paying a hundred thousand dollars a year or more in, in just liability insurance. We're feeding two hundred and fifty tigers every single day, and we didn't we didn't take a dime of PPP money that we could have taken. But we didn't. Why do taxpayers have to pay for our eccentric hobbies? You know. And so, but we're the frauds in the in Tiger King, and we're the con men. Fuck you all. You know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We're the only ones who got up and busted our ass every day to pay. You know, pay our own way. And these attorneys and these producers just fuck the system. But um, they were filming for five years, and he just wanted to. He wanted to do a. Rep, Eric Good wanted to do a, like a reptile expose, and somehow it turned into. And we can get into that because. Or the murder plots. Right? Yeah. yeah. And and then he came back one day when, and Joe was gone. Joe had absconded. Joe knew that. Something was happening. He knew that we were recording him. He knew something was going bad. And he took off. And Eric Good shows up and he says, where's Joe? He says, you'll never see him again. And he goes, and I said, I'm the new owner. I said, I, and he says, well, can we interview you? So we went on the back porch and interviewed us. And, and we didn't tell him what was going on. But he was ready to rap. That was like in... June or July. It was July of 2018. He was ready to rap. Well, he told us that he want he, the filming was based on Carol Baskin yeah, and her missing nice husband. On Carol Baskin. Yeah, it, he told all of us something different as to why he was filming. And he told Carol yeah. Baskin was to end. You know, he, he just oh, lied to everybody. Wait, 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 yeah, none of us yeah. even. Yeah, yeah. None, none of us even know what network. What he's. He told me he was going to sell it overseas. Not too many people might watch it. And then the next fucking week, we're on Netflix. And you're like, what? So you, so you literally found out what the world was? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew the day of. Oh, you know, that's him. And we had so. entertainment attorneys tell us that it sold someplace between 36 and $100 million. Did y'all see any of that? Or? No. No. Oh, <laughs> no. shit. I mean, so, very yeah. little. He, he licensed some footage from yeah, us. So, yeah, so. <laughs> but um, now when it came to us, wanted to do Tiger King 2. Yeah, yeah. Then you got to pay up. Three, four, five. Yeah. 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 What is it? Is it interesting to y'all, right? Because I'm gonna speak for me as a black man. When this came out, word of mouth with Netflix is something, it's just a power tool. Everybody, you gotta watch this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now you got all these de these demographics that would have never been tapped into y'all's world that's tapped into y'all's world now. <laughs> 
How does that change for y'all? Like when y'all walk around, and you got people like, oh shit, it's the time. Yeah, like, I mean, last night, it was just, you know, last night we had. I love it. I love meeting. I love talking to people. I love saying hello. I mean, like, it's just, it's so nice as we have not met anybody that's been really mean to us face to face. Of course, they're online. All kinds of keyboard yeah, yeah. warriors. The haters, the haters are all online, but when they, but the haters, when they see you, they're like, oh my God, I want to get a photo with you. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. But you know, we're not going to turn you down, but talk all the shit you want, yeah. but you're yeah, not going to do really anything. Like it, you know what? It's, it's cool. It's, um, when you walk into a place like we did last night and, and you know, everybody calls you a legend and you're an OG and you know, uh, like, oh, he to, the he I yeah, told my mom right I was. Way. Yeah. You see, you got the yeah. It used to be only my mom only my mom thought this and now all these strangers think this. Jeff, when did you start wearing jewelry though? When did you start Oh I, you know what? I um, yeah, yeah, I had <laughs> always I He said always <laughs> You know who, I grew up as a kid, and Evil Knievel, you know, Mr. USA, and Elvis, you know. The guys who were so different than, than everyone else were my idol. And I ultimately grew up, you know, I got pictures on my phone of me with Evil when I was 10 at a jump. And then I grew up to manage his son, Robbie Knievel, and book, you know. So mm -hmm. everything that I've ever, Elvis, you know, I, I, I was too young to have met Elvis. I was 11 when he died. But I knew Elvis's bodyguards. I mean, after Elvis died, these guys mm -hmm. didn't know what to do, you know, and they were broke. So I was buying all of the Elf stuff that they had that Elvis had given them over the years. So um, Prince, you know, I, um, um, I was a huge Prince fan. I mean, he's, he's Prince's God to me. And mm -hmm. I saw some of his clothes for sale one time and, on eBay. And I got on and I said, right, where'd you get these? And she says, I got... She goes, I have trunks full of this stuff. And it ended up, long story short, I flew out to LA with a stack of cash and came back with three big military duffel bags full of Prince's costumes. Oh, but say yeah. who you... Yeah, I yeah. have we some got, We got a few. And, but say who um, you got it from there. I got it. So I get in, I get... <laughs> I got a lot of cash. And I call this number. And the guy says, I'll pick you up at LAX baggage claim. Here comes this old, it looks like OJ's Bronco. Yeah. And blacked out windows and this really rough looking dude in the front seat and this really big, you know, corn fed woman in the passenger seat. She gets out and she says, get in. And I thought, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. And I look in the back seat and Prince's ex-wife, Mayte, May is in the back seat. Wow. She was, said, it was her who was selling the clothes. I yes. said, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You're sitting on a gold mine. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're sitting on some, some Well, shit. you know, Prince sued me though. Yeah. He's serious? He sued me. Because um, he got his clothes? Yeah, well, it wasn't because I had his clothes. It was because I was going to sell the clothes to the Hard Rock. And um, he was stopping the sale. Yeah, Prince was suing yeah. me to try to get an injunction to stop the sale of the clothes until he could convince me that I'm a huge Prince fan and I shouldn't do this because it would. You know, Prince was really conscious about his size. And exactly. if you see mm -hmm. Prince's clothes, it's smaller, it's smaller. Yeah, if it's my baby. Did you convince him? Prince convinced me. Um, Prince bought his clothes back. Oh, wow. um, so you met Prince? Yeah. Yeah, you met him in Prince, the Prince, part, part of the deal was um, Prince sued me in federal court in Charleston, South Carolina. But being sued by Prince was the best Bro, the authenticity. I mean, because the, the, the cop, or the, the judge says, my, my attorney says, I have no idea where these guys are coming from. You, what you did is perfectly legal. You bought it, and now you're going to resell it. He says, so I'm going to sit in the back. I'm going to put you up and let you talk to the judge. And the judge says, Mr. Lowe, you know, tell me the story. So I told him, you know, what I just told you guys. And he said... He says, well, what's this stuff worth? And I said, well, Hard Rock's willing to give me $300,000 for it. And I said, that's based on me telling him it's authentic. Yeah. Now I've got Prince suing me to stop. <laughs> yeah, so I said, this is yes. the best letter of authenticity I could ever get. And I said, so I got to believe that the value is much higher. And he says, you need to thank Prince's lawyers. And I said, Thanks, guys. So yeah. he's like, your honor, can we have a recess? And we went on the hallway and I got Prince on the phone. And um, Prince, I mean, after we hammered out a negotiation, Prince was like, I'm going to fly you and your family first class to Minneapolis. We'll put mm -hmm. you up in, in the West End to bring you to Paisley Park for an after show. And That's yeah, amazing. so, you know, then, then that started a, you know, not a close relationship, but then Prince wanted, Prince had other clothes that had, he had those Glam Slam clubs in 
I think Chicago and Miami and in Minneapolis, and he closed them down. Well, he left trunks and trunks of clothes, you know, the, yeah. and the guy who managed all the clubs took all the clothes. He contacted me. He says, I see that you buy Prince clothes. I said, bring it up, brother. So, <laughs> right. so I bought, you know, and, and I would help kind of get some of the stuff off the, off the market for Prince. Now, when Prince died, you know, put the, I was paying $900 for a pair of Prince boots. Okay. I had, I had a whole roll. Right after he died, a pair sold for seventy-five thousand at auction. Not mine, but some—I mean, they were ugly yellow ones, and I had the cool ones. So yeah. You had purple ones, so yeah, like purple yeah. and red and everything. Where it's at with the Prince memorabilia. Yeah, Prince now, is yeah. That's it's crazy off the hook. Now, and you also mentioned Evil Knievel. Yeah. You gave a, be a fan at eleven, ten years old. Yeah. To and then grow up, and you—I got pictures. I'll show you. I'll leave you pictures. So you can put it on them. Yeah, please do. My office has. I don't know, there's probably 70 sets of leathers and 15 or 20 of the motorcycles in my office. All the, ever, all the memorabilia. I owned the Big Evil Knievel semi truck and I sold it to the Harley Davidson Museum. And in you Kansas. owned the Elvis jumpsuits yeah, too. I've got five Elvis jumpsuits. Oh man, I made. How you feel they did on the uh, Elvis movie just recently? Do I? Oh, that, you know what? Uh, Austin Butler did a good job. Oh, that was great. I and loved that's, it. That's, who's tougher to play? And that'd be criticized in Elvis Presley. Exactly. You know, the coolest, you a lot of things right. It's just like oh, if yeah. anybody ever tries to do the print story, that guy better be, you know, he better be really good. And Austin Butler did a commendable job. Yes, there you go. There you go. There you go. God damn. All right, so. Did you watch Joe versus Carol? The, on, on NBC on, Peacock? On Peacock. Right. It's on, on Peacock. On Peacock. On Peacock. No, yeah. Honestly, yeah, I haven't seen it. It's like an actual, like. TV series, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, they actually did a really good job Kate casting McKinnon, all Kate McKinnon of us. from Saturday Night Live played Carol, nailed it. Okay. And it was funny because they have an Alan Glover, they have a James Garrison, they have a Lauren, they have a Jeff. That's what we're watching. Though. It was fun. It was fun to watch. Because they actually got the story more right than I feel like Netflix did. I, was, I think it was more of the truth than Netflix. Yeah, 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 yeah. more versus narrative. They more showed story. the real Joe, I think, in the, my opinion. Yeah. They, they showed Joe killing tigers. Just going up and shooting them in the head. Mm. They did. They did show that, but they also showed you getting into the fight with Joe in the office. Yeah. So they actually paid attention to our our uh, version. our, our yeah. version and our recordings because there's proof of it all. So Jeff, tell me about the fight um, with Dylan in regards to like, how everything kind of played out at the very end. You know, Dylan was Dylan was a um, young twenty year old or twenty one year old cheerleader. Um, that Joe found on Grinder, and um, right after Travis died, moved him into the park and married him two or three months later or weeks later. I don't know. Well, he was with them a week or two later, like having dinner with him and stuff. We heard, now that you mention it, we heard that Joe was meeting Dylan up at the safari bar and Travis found out. Oh, yeah. And that could have been, you know. That probably could have been another thing. Yeah, like at the same time. It's, uh, uh, but. Um, I mean, we're good with Dylan now. We're, yeah, Dylan's, we're, Dylan's fine. I mean, Dylan, Dylan. Yeah, we, Dylan's we have apologized several times. But it was, it was one morning. I mean, he'd drive by us and he'd flip us off. And because I'd tell Joe, Joe I'd say, was telling I'd him say, bad yeah, things about I'd say, us. I'd say, this motherfucker, you better put your little bitch on a leash because, you know, shit's going to go bad. I'll throw him off this property. I own the property. And, you know, just, you know, I can't stand the drama. You, know, you cause the drama, Joe. You know, you cause all this drama. So one morning, we're carrying a baby tiger. We used to I raise was carrying one. You all were the carrying baby one. tigers in our, in our cabin that we had at the zoo. Mm -hmm. And he turns a fucking garden hose on us. And I said, all right, that's it. And we just got into a fight on the parking lot. Yeah. Was it really 15 minutes? No, it was, it was not. The fight? No. No, five, God, no. Five minutes, three no. minutes. It Fuck, was... I couldn't go 15 minutes ago. <laughs> That's a long time. That's 50 yeah. minutes of sex kills me. <laughs> right. Speak it, brother. Speak it. Now, so I have to ask, because, you know, this, you know, we're in Dallas, and of course, Thackerville, Oklahoma is right up, it's right up the road, you know, mm -hmm. as far as Oklahoma, Texas, our neighbors. We've seen tigers in the backyards of Oak Cliff, Texas. Like, I ain't saying scary. nothing. No. I'm just curious, how does one get a hold of a tiger? You know, I can help you with that, because I had a tiger in the backyard in Oak Cliff, Texas. Oh damn! So this is normal. Yeah, he's the OG right here. You're right, right. He's the OG. I bought a tiger out of the Dallas Morning. Uh, well, it's actually a lion cub out of the Dallas Morning News back in '95. 
Oh wow. For like eight hundred bucks, seven hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks. And I had it at my house in Oak Cliff, right there at Davis and Westmoreland. Damn. And back then we didn't have social media, so it was cool. Nobody really ratted you out or anything. Yeah. Nobody had recording phones. You know, we had bag phones and shit. Nobody, you know, dollar thirty five. It was a whole lot better yeah. living back in the day anyway, when we didn't have all the social media. So I bought a tiger being a or a line being a dumbass. But it was legal yeah. then. It was it was, it was legal. legal. It was legal. Yeah. So just curiosity, from tigers and lions, to raise one as a cub or a pup, whatever you call it, I guess. Cub. Cub. It gets to a certain point where, okay, we have to, it's too big. Like You know, in two years, they start to mature. Oh, and two years. Um, it, it, I'm not going to say they couldn't kill you before two, but you'd stand a good chance, I mean, especially, you know, somebody your size. I mean, as long as you're working you punch, with you, them every you know, day. You're, 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 you're going to be able to finish it. You probably mm. would. Um, but once they get 500 pounds, they get on top of you and one bite to the neck and you're done. Yeah. But we, um, and you know, it's, it's happened a couple of times. We got, I got lucky a couple of times. Yeah. I had my line for 21 years with my daughter. Damn. Yeah. But it, he it grew depends. up. I'm the cat. I mean, I grew up with cats and my yeah, family was in a circus. You had tigers in a crib when yeah, you were a baby. Yeah. So just like we, you know, I've got pictures in a, in a crib where I've got tigers in a playpen, not a crib. And now we've got hundreds, hundreds of, of pictures her. of her with baby oh, wow. lions and tigers, you know. Trust you. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's yeah. great with the cubs. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. No, he means you trust the cubs with the baby. Oh, it's, well, I trust her with them, so. Yeah. And she still plays with the baby. Oh, yeah, she, she loves, loves them. them. But um, it's, you know, they're not great pets. I mean, it's, and they're not for everybody. It's a responsibility, for sure. But I'd rather have a tiger than a hippo, you know. And, <laughs> I got a question. How, how lucrative is the underground tiger market? I don't think it's don't nearly think, you know, what they I don't say it is. Know. And you know that, that would be that would be a joke. Argument, that would be a joke question. <laughs> the argument that I've always wanted is they've said, you know, Peter will come out and say there's ten thousand, you know, there's ten thousand tigers in captivity. Okay, now they'll say there's forty seven hundred left in India and there's thirty six hundred left. Okay, at what point are they no longer in danger? Do they have to back up that number of what's in captivity and take them off the endangered species list? Then all of us could have one. It's an right. expensive hobby. It is very expensive. You know, it's like raising a child. You got to feed it every day. You got to water, a veterinary care. It's just like a kid. And hey, we were feeding out uh, 6,000 pounds of meat a day. Mm -hmm. 6,000 pounds of meat. So what do you say when you see like a Mike Tyson when he was raising... You know what? I, I'm not going to pick on Mike because I don't want... Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, no, we all like Mike. No, 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 we all like Mike. No, 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 he, 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 loved, he loved first the doves, you know, before he got into, you know, professional boxing and then it became Tigers. Well, you know, he lived next to Wayne Newton and... Yeah, um, yeah. And... Wayne owned Las Vegas. I mean, he owned all the city, the county and the city yes. commissioners. Mm -hmm. So he helped Mike get a permit to, to keep him. And even Mike to this day says, you know, that is the dumbest thing I, you know, I'm ludicrous, you know? And, right. um, but I bet you'd do it again. If, if it was a 20 year old Mike Tyson, he'd do it again. Yeah. Because you know, yeah, you know who else, <laughs> you know, Shaq. Um, oh, wow. Shaq owned Tigers. Well, he, yeah, he was, he was, he sponsored a lot of our cats too. Yeah. I mean, Shaq loves yeah. tigers. Shaq loves tigers. Oh, and, yeah. um, if, if, if Shaq could legally have them in his, at all, you know, Georgia house, I, mean, I, I know he would do it. Yeah. Um, it's just a, you know, it's a status thing it, for, for us. It wasn't a status thing. We had a love for it though. We yeah. had a love. I mean, we for we the weren't animals. in the news. Nobody knew who the hell we were. So for us to have them was, is a love, you know, for, you know, for Tony Montana to have one was a, was a flex and, um, well, yeah, I mean, so, they, they found that one in Houston not too long ago. Who'd they belong to? I, I bet it was that woman. <laughs> People are just turning them loose, you know, when they can't. Yeah. And so, that, that makes it look bad on all of us. So all right, I want to talk about a couple of guys from, uh, you know, the show real quick and just, you know, the stats, what's going on with them. Uh, but Doc I tell. Uh -huh. uh, uh, he, I'm leaving that up to y'all. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts as far as him being behind? Like, is he, do you look at him like Joe Exotica as far as, you know, the treatment of animals and things like that? You put him in the same boat. He's a piece of shit. Like, yeah. you know. mm. Well, Jeff, I mean, Doc, what he does is he breeds cubs nonstop and dumps them or incinerates them. Mm -hmm. He's not, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, because what happens is, Tiger's only good from like four to 16 weeks, legal to take pictures of him. Now he really can't technically because his new law passed. Well, he's doing it now because he's using plexiglass. 
So even if he makes $100,000 a cub or whatever, you still have to feed this thing for 20 something years. So he just destroys them. And, uh, and a lot of those people just, it's all about money and not about the animal. He, um, yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe idolized Doc Animal. And um, he tried to he tried to do his Oklahoma Hillbilly Zoo to match that Myrtle Beach place, and the Myrtle Beach place is really super nice. Yeah. And Doc was making upwards of fifty thousand dollars a day um, with his tours. It's three hundred and sixty yeah. bucks for a tour, and we our tours and you know, but Doc is smart. He put it in Myrtle Beach Myrtle, where there's people. Beach. Joe puts yeah, it in Winniewood, Oklahoma, where there's cows. Dirty Myrtle. Oh, those are for vacation. Yeah. Well, well, Doc was a front too. He his place was nice with the public scene. Right. Behind the scenes, animals live in little shitty ass cages. In the dark, yeah. under a barn. Yeah, it's oh, awesome. Yeah. The wow. dungeon is what yeah. they kind of called it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's all an illusion, you know. Doc's smarter. Mm -hmm. But Doc, like Joe, likes underage girls. Joe likes underage boys. But they both like attention. The same. Yeah, yeah. yeah they crave right. the attention. He's, he's, he's in a lot of trouble. I mean, I, I, I don't know if he, his family has a grocery wholesaling businesses. I thought they were into bananas or something. Uh, we heard Chiquita, but now they're just like grocery wholesalers. Okay. Something. But they were making $800 million a year or something. So his family's got the money, I think, to buy him out of trouble, but he's got a lot of charges. You know, he's got yes. money laundering and, and, and human trafficking and we'll have to see. He goes to trial in, in July, I think. But. Oh, they officially put a date in? still being told. The story's still being told. Yeah, they, yeah. you're not the, even... The, 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 this is no, I don't think this is going to end. Yeah, whenever you look at Tiger King, you look into one person and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. And when we start doing our homework, I'm like, man, this is... You go down really a rabbit deep. hole. This goes to sheriffs. Yeah. This goes to corrupt politicians. Yeah, who has the money? Who has the money? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's... Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein is going to come into this. Watch. Jeffrey Epstein's going to, wow. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Woo, hold on. It's so, so, Jim, I have to ask you, you know, what's your relationship now with Tim as far as Tim Stark? Tim Stark. Goes? Tim is. Mm. <laughs> Tim's Tim. Is, Tim. Is, Tim's just a dumbass. I mean, Tim. <laughs> he gets, Tim, Tim is his own worst enemy. He doesn't know when to shut up. He just runs his. You mouth. guys see him talk. Yeah, I see him. Yeah, you just talk him now. I mean, it's. <sighs> God. He, he, kinda... he hurt himself. I mean, we're we're kind of out there, and we just look at him and shake our heads. Oh my Even God, the directors of Tiger, up. the directors of Tiger can call me and just say, "How the fuck did you tolerate this?" You know, it was not a. And I told him, I said, "You're gonna lose your license." He he went as soon as Joe was out of the picture. He called me up, and wanted to be my partner in his zoo, and I knew he had a shitload of animals that were really, you know, expensive animals. I thought, well, that'd be an instant way to populate the, the zoo with all kinds of cool animals. And he had millions of dollars worth of equipment um, that his 501c3 had, had purchased, you know, um, front end loaders and excavators and bobcats and bulldozers. And I said, yeah, you know, let's, let's do it. You know, I, I know you, you're a hard worker, but he's the biggest bullshitter you've ever, ever met. And, you know, he... He's the biggest shit talker, not. Yeah, he's just shit talker. He, yeah. You get in his face, and he's gonna he melt. He'll but. call her, yeah. So. I feel sorry for Tim. I mean, Tim. Yeah, he, he seems like he's. Tim was targeted, and um, I think Tim was targeted more than Joe was targeted. They they put a ban on him from ever owning an animal again. Yeah, it's like yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah. So, and this is just really a good thing about the head out. So. No, like, okay. Tell Joe for, I said hi. For, for y'all too. Um, you know, people look at y'all's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They have questions, they have concerns, but they also have admiration. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, a lot of young men are probably like, man, this is Old what I want. Old fucker to getting more pussy than Yeah, I right. Am. I want to live up to this guy. I mean, so how's that going? I mean, we've seen the original Nanny Search. Uh, we've seen how that played out. Uh, I, I forget her name as far as the one that was on Tiger King. One. Masha. Masha. Masha, yes. Uh, you know that played she's out. She's a smoke show. She's hot. <laughs> right. right. She's fucking hot. hot. Yes. Hot as shit. But so, she's, she's really nice. She's actually a sweet girl. Yeah, so how does that work as far as the dynamic of y'all's relationship? Y'all married, and yet you know what? I was married. I was married for twenty six years, and I wasn't a good husband because I was on the road, you know, with the Knievels and yes. the opportunities to to just fuck up, mm -hmm. you know, well, right every yeah. corner. Just imagine, you know, if, or whoever, you know. Um, it's a good excuse. And she, you know, but in in eventually that destroyed my first marriage. Um, 
And the second one, I just knew um, was going to have to be one, somebody could keep up with me. My first wife couldn't keep up with, let's go to the club every weekend. She would never go to the club. Right. So, you know, my, what had become my, you know, my passion, my, my fun, I couldn't do, you know. And with her, it's like, okay. And, and you know, what better, what better um, determinant for cheating is there than say, you know, yeah, you know, fuck her, fuck her, you know. Right. Um, just as long as I'm there, just as long mm -hmm. as I'm part of it, you know. And it's it works. I mean, it's worked for us. A lot of men would love that same scenario where, like, it's not even the word cheating. It's like, that's like a... Rock. It's like a hall pass, you know, yeah, for like, like, yeah. Yeah. So I have to ask, then, um, you know, I've seen the situation where uh, Cole 69 has come up. Yeah. And, uh, you know... Uh, you know I should have trademarked that. Yeah, 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 right. You should trademark that. Cole 69 on shirts, please. Um... Somebody might, you know, come visit the zoo, and uh, you know, I don't want to call them prospects, but something might be tangible. Well, you know, you can't get on the radio and say, "Hey, Alan, <laughs> right, right. look at that, <laughs> look at that chick on the sidewalk," you know. You can't do that. You can't do so, that. So it got to the point. It was just a joke for a while because you know you got to yeah. realize we weren't the Tiger King Park. We were this little backwoods zoo, and you know yeah. we might have 15 customers a day, and but then when we had, you know. Yeah, you know, when you got 1,500. Well, Alan was getting bad at it. Alan would be on, I was like, I'd have to get on the radio and be like, Alan, shut the fuck so we needed, up we needed, for a little bit. Wow. We, we yeah. needed, um, because, you know, code 10 was animal, die, code, we had 10 codes. Yeah, there were actual codes that we'd oh, have to say on the but, radio. Yeah, but you don't want to get on the radio. Uh, we got a dead cat and, you know, so it was, you know. Code um, 10, code 8, 10, cage. Code 9 was something. like, get the fuck out of the park, something's loose. Um, and... Yeah. You know, we all had numbers. Joe was A1, I was A5, red. I was red. Um, so we tried to, and Carol Baskin would have cars sit on the interstate. And they would have to radios. Listen to our to, to our VHF radios. Mm -hmm. So she knew what was going on. How many, you know, because we'd get on the radio, Joe would say, uh, all right, I need cameraman. We got 300 people on this tour. So Carol could do the math. She, she knew how much money Joe was making to go, you know, to try to get her 800 grand that she, that Joe owed her. So everything we did was kind of encrypted, and um, Code 69 was just an easy way. It was more way. of a joke, but it ends up being fun, yeah, you know? Yeah, I'll tell you the funniest story. Oh, my God. Oh, God, what? We, we had this really cute girl that showed up to do Playtime, oh, and I told Lauren. Oh, son of a bitch, this one. I told Lauren, I said, get her number. I said, just get her number. So it ends up... I don't know how the... She ended up working at the zoo. She, she ended up working, working at the zoo. zoo. She ended up living in our cabin. And um, we took her all over the place. And um, then she started to like... She started to get... I, she it, started to like... There was me, nothing. There was nothing. She didn't want to be open. She wanted to like... At this have, time, it was not an open you know, thing. That's... Yeah. She was... Yeah. And Lauren was like... I was... Because I was showing her the text. You know, she's saying... You know, I never wanted somebody so much in my life. And I was Lawrence says, pissed. all right, fuck yeah, that. Yeah, right, yeah, wait a minute, yeah, so, because she so was she, doing it behind my yeah, back. Yeah, like, I understand, <clears> but yeah, we're trying to, hey. Right. Like, open. you're living in my house. You're doing this behind my back. I'm going to confront you. Yeah, so so yeah, Lauren, real, Lauren, Lauren kicks her out. And I can't even mention this girl's name. Right. Without, you're, you're good now. Without the, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, yeah, you're a real one. The only time. Hey, so, so. <laughs> So one day, a year later, maybe two years later. It's two years later for sure. We're walking through the zoo, and I see this fine looking thing from the, from the back. And I see, and I I didn't see, pay attention I to see my friend Lindsay, who's also an employee, talking to this girl. And I Whoa. got on the radio, Jeff. and I'm heading to, the, yeah. to a whole different building. And I said, A5, A A5 code 69. And all of a sudden, she turned, she turned around and it was her. Oh, and I died. I fell over and Lindsay was laughing. Everybody she was like, cracked she up, was like all she said was, Lauren's going to kill me. Yeah. She's going to kill me. That I didn't funny. tell her she was on park. And I was like, son of a bitch. That was a really funny day. Oh my God! Yeah. But then, but then they, you know, Tiger King Two tries to sound it in, like to make it some predator. You no, know. it was just more yeah. like a fun Jason little Jason Hansen, you know. So you, you mentioned a, a, an OnlyFans account, of course, to get ahead of it. So how is yeah. that as far as that's new, but it's a source of revenue? Yes, it is. So Lauren, how's it for to have an OnlyFans and to be able to, 
you know, put content out and, you know, content to exist outside yeah. of you putting it out. I, I'm, I get to be me. I get to show me. I'm not afraid to show my body. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. And, you know, there's going to be people out there that are going to be like, oh, you shouldn't do that. You should have more morals. And it's like, no, I, I'm going to be me. I don't, I'm not going to live by your standards and I'm not going to have some guy tell me what I can and cannot do. Or some, you know, you know cheap. Cheap. yeah, I mean, and, yeah, and it's, right. it's money. I'll I was like, <laughs> it's money and I do well at it. There's and I'm girls happy. in Dallas who are making several million dollars a year yes. that we know. Without yeah. Over. <laughs> yeah. Without yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I enjoy being on OnlyFans. Um, Yes, I, there's X-rated stuff up there, but that's for PPV stuff, and it's, you, you know, I, tried I like it. Fans, but nobody was buying. Nobody I know. Was buying. He's got really ugly feet. But the no, good thing right. is, the best part is, I have a husband that is there, like rooting for me and supporting me through the entire thing. So he's not like backing, like telling me you shouldn't do this or anything. He's there, like supporting me throughout the entire. It's thing. just a rare relationship where there's just no jealousy. I mean. She ain't gonna leave. She ain't gonna leave OG, and I'm not gonna it leave. It took a while. You know, it wasn't like it wasn't like um, I. They were like you know walking on eggshells every now and then, but then right. we're like, okay, we need to open up right. more about this. And yeah, so like, how did you break to him? Like, yeah, I want to be on the fans. Like, how did that conversation? Oh, you I don't know, even know the I first time we did. I don't remember. I don't remember how. It I think it was more like we heard about other girls. We were probably girls. rolling and said. We heard of other girls that we were like, like friends idea. with. They were like, you should try OnlyFans. Yeah. And of course, it was after Tiger King came out, and I was like, all right. I mean, I have already have a bunch of this content, so. I mean, what guy doesn't want a wife that brings some shits? Yeah, I know. So you I enjoy. Really? So you hear like people like Black China be like, "Well, I made two hundred fifty million in OnlyFans," and people are going like, "Holy shit!" Like, I know. Is, 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 like, what is the most lucrative? What do you think is the uh, the biggest amount you, of average woman that can make? You know, yeah, I feel like it just depends on who you are, too. We've got a lot of. What is a Tiger King? Yeah, what is like what is you were the first woman on Tiger King that like you have in your own lane? Like you, it's if kind you of like, keep up on it, the tax man. Right? I know. If you <laughs> right, 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 not as much not as you. Not you. Yeah, not you personally. What can you potentially? What can you potentially make? You know, you could potentially make millions. You know, a million a year without a problem. Yeah. And if you worked at it, <laughs> how do you recruit? Like, how do you? Because I seen a quote where you said, "I might show up to the uh, club with your girl, and you might, right. I might leave with your girl." Like, how does how does that work? For you well, see, we've got this mansion down in Mexico that, oh, um, oh, no. dude, I'll, I'll show you pictures. I can't wait to get rich. It was built. It was built to resemble the Versace mansion. And the people who owned our the, were our condo is. She came to me and she says, "You just have this marketing mind. Can you help me do this?" And I said, "She took us over to it." And I said. Fuck, this is a you fucking OnlyFans mansion. Yeah, you this, got you know, a gold mine here. This, you know, Airbnb in this thing for 75 bucks. Because it was like, I'll show you pictures. This is crazy. So I said, I said, okay, we've got an OnlyFans mansion right here. We'll stream cameras and we'll bring, you know. So that's what we're doing now. Yeah. Um, so, so all you girls out there. So all you girls that want to make a million dollars a year. This up, we'll put you to work. Wait, I'm curious. Well, she's, they've got, she's got the advantage of being able to help. Let's say your girlfriend wanted to do OnlyFans, but... She can, you know, who's, who's going to subscribe? Well, if she fucks Lauren Lowe and gets put on Lauren Lowe's OnlyFans and Lauren Lowe tags her, and she's, now she's my, got all, then my of, subscribers all of her to go followers to them and, then and just say, God damn, that girl, you know. But for you, Jeff, for you, Jeff, like, how did, I just why, did I mean, ego never kick in for you? Do I? Did ego never kick in for you personally? Like, Oh, dude, I'm not about I mean, to. I'm not about to. of how much money she can make, right? You no, know, you know, because like, I made. Man, I'm over here making M's. Like, I'm not saying she No, it's nice right. for a change, you know? Just uh, takes the pressure off of. Um, you, 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 can, you can take more risks in your own life yeah, with, you with businesses. Do I want to invest in a jet ski? Do I want to invest in Taking 4? Yeah, if I lose a little bit, she'll make it up. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it yeah. takes yeah. a heat yeah. off. Um, and it, it allows us to. We don't work. I mean, we don't work. There you go. Okay, have you ever thought about bringing, like, a tiger in? Um, you know what? There's, we've had, we, she's got pictures, naked pictures with, with baby tigers. Oh, shit. Oh, um, shit. Oh, subscribe! Subscribe! But, subscribe! 29! 29! But there's a fine line, you know, even OnlyFans, I think, have rules. You can't have, you know, any yeah, child can. in a background right. of a picture. Yeah. And, and animals get to be a little bit like Joe Exotic, you know, we, um, 
But but it's more like it's more like posing with laying, a posing laying with a in tiger. bed, taking a nap. Oh. Like like we, we, I've fallen asleep in bed, and like one of the cats will just come over and just like cuddle with. I me got or more something. pictures of white so. tigers laying on her naked butt Even asleep. Yeah. Dog takes pictures of animals naked. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. It happens. Yeah. You know the sad part is I think this kangaroo might have got herpes. Yeah. God, oh, man. man. Damn! Damn, Damn. 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 Hers was 250, 250 yeah, she, bucks. Yeah, 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 she she fucked it up for everybody. People paid that and were like, what the fuck? Well, because and, she, and she promised said, them. She said that there was you know, x-rated material, which Yeah, she promised them all this content to get yeah, there, and it wasn't. It. Yeah. yeah, but like overnight, she made... She, made, she made a, made a million dollars in... 24 hours or 24 something. 24 hours or something like that. So it's just kind of like, well, fuck. But OnlyFans but claims that, they, that they've paid out $5 billion. I believe I believe. And then... Sometimes I wish I was the normal woman. Have y'all ever thought about doing like a podcast? I mean, y'all playing is so like unique. We we've been on a lot, you know, um, but to host one ourselves, she's actually. I just started. She hosting started one her and her, with her and friend. one of her friends. Yes. Polar opposite, you know. A uh, ginger power hour. Ginger power hour. Because she's a redhead too. And she and I are like complete opposites. But they grew up best friends. Yeah, we're best friends. We've known each other since we were like brownies and Girl Scouts. So it's she like, we go way back. Sylvester Stallone's daughter. She's a ginger as well. Oh, yeah. Sylvester yeah. Stallone's daughter is yes. a ginger? Yeah. I would love to see that. <laughs> I mean, no, his, his daughters are hot. Hopefully she'll see this. All of it. All oh, this my all God, of yes. Did I would you, love that. Did you see when um, Stallone's family girls. dressed up like the Every Tiger character. King? Oh, yeah. See, look at that. Look, look at the, the social, yeah. I mean, just the, the, the phenomenon you guys have, have brought. Now, I have to ask this. Um, they recently said you guys had, um, they stopped you guys from being able to exhibit. Uh, in, in the United States. In the United yeah. States. So therefore, yeah. what, for them to come at you guys like that and therefore win, for them to win it, and therefore now, hey, the United States, but we also have Mexico, we have Canada, we have, we have everywhere else. Well, How see, do you guys navigate that? What they did is they wanted, they wanted to take out the private zoo industry, the period, everybody. So when they came in and raided our animals and said that they were unhealthy, then they found out, well, they had to get health certificates to move them. And the vet said they're all healthy. The government's all vet says, yeah, they're perfectly they healthy have, to move. Yep. So, so now you get into a courtroom and they say, your animals are unhealthy. Just say, well, then how did you move them? You know, and, and we have did, you falsify, did you falsify videos. vet records to move them because you're the federal government? And we, then when we started to produce hundreds of thousands of dollars of annual veterinary bills and, and animal mm -hmm. care in the records, they were like, okay, Carol Baskin lied to us, that cunt. So it got to the point where just that raid on our, on our property probably cost taxpayers a half a million bucks. And we were gonna be stuck with that bill. We were gonna be charged with animal neglect and, and moving animals without a license. I had the fucking license. So they, we got a call one day and just say, DOJ just said they're gonna drop all charges and you don't have to pay any fees. Yeah. In, in exchange, um, and, but you can't get your animals back because they've sent them all over the fucking planet. I said, great. So in exchange, you just agree not to apply for another USDA license. And I said, I don't want another USDA. Fuck the USDA. You know, it's a bunch of corrupt people run by Carol Baskin. And what they did when they raided, it was people, unless you've been raided before. Fucking machine guns in our face. They had AK-47. They put them in our daughter's yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah, they put them in our daughter's face. She was sleeping in her crib. They were, like, going in through all of our doors. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, my daughter's satellite, life is in risk. satellite vans on our property for... Oh, it's God, like, it was what bad. The fuck, El Chapo's armored vehicles. Here, I promise you. They had armored vehicles yeah. everywhere. And it was like, what the fuck? Oh, it was bad. Just to take our animals to GFAS... Sanctuaries. Guess who? Yeah, guess who? Guess, guess who, who the GFAS it. is? Carol Baskin. Guess where every one of our cats went? GFAS facilities. You see. Yeah. They didn't go to the AZA zoos. They didn't go to you know other private zoos. They went to GFAS. So who do you think is behind the whole goddamn thing? 
That kind that of Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin. Yeah, our Carol. government's so corrupt. Uh, it's there's crazy. so much corruption. So, so you know what? I, I, I said you... She lives up to no, she's all, the, all the hate that I was. She uh, really yeah. lives up to it to this day. Like, well, I, and I told them, I said, you know what? Nobody's going to be able to open one of these things in the United States anymore. But I'm not married to the United States. If they're going to fuck me, I'll go to Mexico and live the American dream. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, I don't know if you guys have been to Mexico, but there's... It's beautiful. There's actually more Americans and Canadians moving to Mexico on a daily right basis. Now, on yeah. daily basis, like where we live, there's a bunch of Canadians and a bunch of yeah, Americans that live around us. So in, in our lifestyle, yeah. you know, is is conducive to Fifth Avenue in Playa de Carmen. Fifth and Twelfth is nothing but nightclubs yeah, and so you nice. know nice coco bongos and you know yeah. thousands and thousands of people want to party every single night of the of the week. And we're every surrounded city. by wildlife too. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. So we got so, we got jaguars and monkeys and all them around us. So I love it. It's great. So you know you got eight million tourists come in. They you know if they want to pay a hundred bucks, it goes. We could only get thirty five dollars for a ticket in Winniewood, Oklahoma. You can get a hundred. You might get two hundred dollars. You know down in in Cancun mm -hmm. to come see. So it's it's a win win, and Carol Baskin has zero influence in in Mexico. Yeah. There you go. Right? And you know. <laughs> there you go. So for those that do want to see kind of what's going on next with Jeff Lowe and of course James um, and uh, Lauren, uh, what's next? I mean, are we talking Tiger King season four? Yes. Okay. Um, and you know Netflix is where we want to take it, but if Netflix doesn't give us a little bit more. Um, creative Control, Hulu also wants it, and Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, Maybe more. yeah, we have we have the ability now to we want we want complete um, editorial control of this one. And the, the story's and we're, we're going to show we're going to show how Jeffrey Epstein plays in this. We're going to show how Carol Baskin and and Don Lewis knew Jeffrey Epstein, um, and it's it's a story that just keeps living, you know. You, you know, as soon as you wrap your final episode, there'll be something come out. Yeah, like, like that'll drop after this. <laughs> yeah. The day after you wrap, this drops. So much has happened since since Tiger King 2 kind of sucked. I mean, it was such a... They brought in new producers, too. And it was, <laughs> it was just like... Was so staged. It was so yeah. different. It was not... It, it they took us to Zaza. You know, Zaza yeah, Hotel. And um, wheeled in all this gear and said you know they're afraid we're filming a porn up there so they said we can't film it and yeah. yet they filmed us up there and he flies in we had this this cute girl living with us in las vegas they fly her in so that she can they can put him in bed with us and which never you know we never went to bed with this girl but they they just staged it all and yeah exactly. but we were you know pay us we don't care yeah, you know pay us, yeah, we'll say, so you know how that goes in, in this part of the world. Yeah. okay okay so but james and i james is actually um, they're shopping, uh, they want to do a reality show. Lauren and I have, have been offered and we turned down a couple. We're just looking for the right one. And, and James now is, um, I'll let you tell me. Yeah, I pretty much have something worked out with my jet ski operation and the nightlife. You know, I'm a party or a club, you get fucked up and all that stuff. So I have somebody interested in my project. It's going to be about the water sports, the jet ski business, the nightlife. There's a bunch of crazy characters around me, and we're gonna probably pretty much start probably in June shooting that. And they came to me, I didn't go to them. You know, I didn't know this was this Tiger King was gonna do this, but they did give us some opportunities to do other things. And I just started a podcast, and it's kind of sloppy now, trying to put it together. What's the name of the podcast? It's gonna be Anything Goes with James, and it's basically we have one episode out now, and it's basically me, Jeff, and Lauren talking for the first time because the director of Tiger King kind of drove wedges between me and Jeff and like our friendship and stuff. He was playing us against each other. So we're dead. We had a mutual hatred and we were like, we gotta put this shit aside and we have to defend ourselves and show the world we're not who they think we are. You know, we do have some good in us and oh, you have to go potty? the director had a motive and that's what we want to show. He's not going to be happy with us trying to do another Oh, she wants the phone. Because what, he's going to be wrong, exposed, honey? too. Because we're digging into his past and stuff. So, you want that you know, phone? I think it's going to happen. It's going to happen pretty soon. And we'll move on to another project. Oh, yeah, no, She's such a good baby. 
kind of bury Netflix in any kind of way. I'm sure they'll jump on opportunity to say, hey. You know who the first person who wanted to buy our story was? Who was that? Shaq. Shaq, Shaq yeah. was at the park the day Joe got arrested. Oh, so, damn. Yeah. And, um, it, that was just like a total coincidence. Yeah, he was he coming to visit his cats. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah there were news, the news crews yeah, yeah. were there. Oh. And he goes, I want to buy their story. You got to sell me the rights to your story. Yeah, I wish I would have. Yeah, but, God. Shaq got a bankroll that's real easy. Yeah. That would have been, yeah. been crazy. <laughs> that would have been insane. I wonder how he knew about it. Like, well, you know, he stopped. Shaq goes to all these little small zoos and plays with baby tigers. And um, he stopped at ours in years before Lauren and I were involved. And he met mm -hmm. Joe. And he just, every once in a while, you'd look up and there'd be, you know, nine feet of dark cloud <laughs> coming down the sidewalk. Walking yeah. Up. And but he's like one of the nicest yeah, guys. He's super nice. He's so nice and sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's but, very entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. yeah. And he's funny. I mean, <laughs> he's funny. So yeah. definitely, I want to be able to have you guys, of course, uh, Lauren, you as well, promote, mm -hmm. you know, again, whatever's coming next outside of trying try to, try to shop for a new network to put, you know, this explosive content you guys have. This, as, as the many hours you guys have with this footage, I'm just curious where to land. But, other than that, as far as um, whether podcasts, OnlyFans, um, books, shows, what else do you guys have coming up uh, that fans can expect to see in 2023? I think I think we're going to start working on a maybe a tequila brand mm -hmm. deal. Um, I like to do. I would like to try to do coffee because coffee is like a really obviously big That's thing, big. and then maybe possibly weed uh, or mushrooms. You're the tiger you're the tiger well, tiger. you have a spot in Oklahoma. Well, I think mushrooms would be a better thing because I think mushrooms are going to be the next. Way. That's the newest way. I think that's going to be a really big deal. Yeah, so. A lot of states are decriminalizing it now. And um, and mushrooms are so much safer. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. I don't know. That's the, that's a new way. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, shout out to Mario. I'm guessing right. you guys have tried mushrooms. <laughs> I, I tried them in nobody said. Time. Nobody said, really, what's, what's that like? No, man, <laughs> I tried them in Vegas one time. To me, I ain't going to lie, the edible was more stronger. Really? But you had the wrong mushroom. Maybe, maybe I didn't have the right yeah. Maybe I don't. I, don't I find know. here's I a find tip. Here's a tip for all your viewers who do mushrooms. Is um, we were buying mushrooms when we were in Thackerville from the lab at Texas A and M. They were growing them down there, oh, wow. and I don't think it was above board. But these guys were growing. They shrimp. were doing experiments. So yes. and he brought it to us. He says, "Okay, you go to Walmart and you buy the bars of coca." It's not chocolate. I mean, it's chocolate, but they call it coca. And he says, you break off one of those squares and you put your mushrooms on it and eat it. And he says it intensifies it by 12. And oh, wow. yeah, yeah. The, oh. the coca tastes nasty, but, but still, so yeah. the mushrooms anyway. Yeah, right. So yeah. like that. Like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In the conversation, I want people to, hey, I'm going to try the, the bars of coca with mushrooms. See what it does. Orange juice is supposed to intensify it too, but I don't know how. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna close out with uh, look who. Oh, 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 actually, she hopped off camera. Oh, okay. Camera shy. Come here, baby. <laughs> Come, here. Come here. There you go. So again, this is a family affair, man. Tiger King uh, has taken over her hair. the world. Uh, Jeff and Lauren, uh, you know, again, for whatever people think, you guys are family. Uh, I don't know yes. what they thought of if they saw TV, but you guys are sitting right here, you know, three to four years later. Yeah. You know, uh, we're here. The show, and there you go, doing your thing. James, of course, you know, doing your thing. Um, I have to say, man, for those that do want to follow you guys yeah. on social media, personally, you come, mommy? what are your best social media accounts? Um, we've got Tiger King Park on Instagram, and we have a uh, Tiger King official on TikTok, and then um, I mean either one, they're all doing like really good. So, sorry, hi, uh, hi. James Garrison, the number one on Instagram usually. Okay, baby. And I started, you know, people. Okay. There's and okay. 10 people have got 12 okay. opinions, but okay. people were starting to bitch that we were putting too much Joe trashing and John Phillips trashing on our site. And I said, well, you know what? I created um, on Instagram, Jeff Lowe dot underscore. It's underscore? Jeff Lowe underscore Tiger, Tiger King. King. And I started loading that thing up with all the, you know, <laughs> yeah, so if you want to, if you want to get in that rabbit hole, go there, and just every there. every day we post shit. You're just dropping things as yeah, slowly, just, yeah. just, just to piss just him off. And it's not even just to piss him off. And I hope he sees it all, and I hope he loses sleep every night. But my but my OnlyFans is Tiger Queen. 
underscore. So we keep everything under the whole tiger name. Yeah, we're not stupid. I mean, that's, yeah. We had to live through that Tiger King mess, so why not take advantage of that? Yeah. You know that name? It might be a serial one day. Cross the place may come at you and say, yeah. hey. Yeah. Tony the Tiger. Say <laughs> Tony the Tiger. They well, never no know. No respectable coming. I got to say it, man. Uh, is there anybody that you'd like to thank? Uh, any shout-outs you'd like to give as far as? Like, thank you guys. Yes. I mean, this has been Thank fun. you guys. You guys have been uh, amazing. Uh, I love it. Thank you guys for pulling up. Again, we, you know, again, for to be a black media platform right. know, during COVID, Mm -hmm. We were enthralled with what the Tiger King was. Again, to be right up to the, the next state up. And mm -hmm. All this was going on under mm -hmm. our nose. We didn't know. The world didn't know. <laughs> but for, for it to play out on screen and on camera, man, thank you guys for allowing us into your lives, man. For real. Can you so, imagine how many other fucked up situations there are that we just don't know about? <laughs> <laughs> we got to wait till the next pandemic to find out. There we go. Can't wait till the next one, man. Right. There we go, man. We got Jeff and Lauren Lowe, man. We also have James in the building, man. Thank Tiger you, guys. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys, y'all have been amazing.